Learning about the Prophet ﷺ and learning about the respect and deference that is due to him is extremely important because the Prophet has rights over us. He said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه None of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his wealth, than his parents, his, 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 his children, his wealth and even his own soul that's between his sides. So the Prophet ﷺ said that we, our Iman's not complete until we actually love him more than we love anything in the world that's precious because he named the most precious things to people, their parents, their children, their, their wealth, and then their own self, right? Because people, you, you love yourself. I mean, Jesus said, uh, love your neighbor as yourself. The assumption is that we love ourselves. That's part of, of uh, uh, human nature, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us love. And what is love? Love is a very amazing word in, in English. It's an amazing word in Arabic. There are many words for love in Arabic. But the, the essential word is hub. That's the essential word. And love in... Uh, Love in, in, is a, it's, an old, uh, it's an old English uh, word that goes back to a Saxon word and, uh, and it relates to being pleased with, to be pleased with. It, and, and interestingly enough, our word believe is related to love, to believe, because you believe in what you're pleased with, what you love, things that your, you, your heart accepts are things that you believe. So love is related to acceptance, the idea that something you're pleased with, you have love for. And the, in, in Arabic, the word hub, which is the word the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه, more beloved to him. So the word hub uh, is a word, if you look at one of the root meanings, it's a seed. So love is a seed that's nurtured and, and it's nurtured with knowledge of the beloved. The more you know about the beloved, the more you love the beloved. So it's, it's a seed. The habba in Arabic is a seed. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu as you get to know the Prophet Sallallahu and you get to know him intimately, and that's one of the purposes of this text, is to know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intimately. As you get to know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam intimately, um, he becomes Well, one of the descriptions of love is, is, they say, friendship on fire. That, that's a description of love. That it, it's something that begun, it, it starts to consume you. And we have people from our tradition who died of love of the Prophet ﷺ, literally died. We have people that bled tears of blood. And tears of blood, which is an old blues motif for people that know anything about um, about an American music. Uh, I'm crying tears of blood for you. Um, tears of blood are real because when somebody goes into a very intense, you get blood, those small little blood vessels in the eyes burst. And so it's a real thing, tears of blood. That's what Imam al Busayri, Amin Tadakiri Jiran Bidi Sarami, Mazaj Daman, Jaram in Muklatin Bidami. You know, that is it from remembering just the places the beloved used to go to that causes this mixture of tears and blood to flow from your eyes. So tears of blood, there's people that have wept tears of blood out of love of the Prophet ﷺ. There's people who have literally died from ishq, and, and ishq is... It's, it's another amazing word. The ashaqa is a, it's a type of vine that begins to grow around a tree and it strangles the tree. So it kills the tree. The Arabs say, الْعِشْقُ دَاءٌ قَاتِلٌ دَوَاءُهُ الْإِتِّصَالِ You know, the ishq is a, a deadly disease that can only be cured by connection, by being connected to the beloved, by the union, the wusul ila al-habib. And so the, uh, the, uh, the love of the Prophet ﷺ can, can really take hold of the heart. Now, 
when you love somebody, you remember them. That's one of the attributes of love. You think about them. I mean, that's what happens when you fall in love and you call, I'm just thinking about you. I can't stop thinking. That's real. It's real. I can't stop thinking about you. I mean, why is that pressing on the, the heart? Because you're in love. That's what love is. I can't stop thinking about you. You write poems. You, you do think, well, what is that effusion that's coming out of the heart to write poems? Really, and people write the worst poems when they're in love, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> they would never do it if they weren't. They would know how ridiculous it is, but it doesn't matter because there has to be some type of ta'bir. Now, what is ta'bir? You abiru, it's what you express. The, the word uh, ibra, which is a discerning lesson, something you gain, is related to abra, which is a tear. And it's related to i'tibar, which is respect. Respect, back to respect. A'tabiruhu. You know, I, I have respect for him. La ulqi lahu i'tibar. I don't give it any significance. So when something has significance and import and meaning, then it begins to affect the heart. And that's why even the remnants of the beloved, qifa nibki, min dhikri habibin wa manziri, this is the jahili motif of Naseeb in the jahili poetry is to Imr al-Qais begins his mu'allaqa by just saying stop my two friends let's look here at where the beloved used to be just to look nibki and weep over the traces of the beloved just to look these are jahili people these aren't this isn't uh, these are just people that knew what love was because Jahili Arabs had a, a deep and profound knowledge of hub. They really knew what love was and they were very intense in their love. They had intense love. But that's one of the motifs of just buka al atlal, just weeping over places where the beloved used to be. Amurru bidiyari diyara layla uqabru dal jidar wa dal jidar wa ma hub al jidari shagafna qalbi wa lakin hubu man sakana diyara. I, I pass by the houses of Layla and, and kiss the walls of the houses. It's just so beautiful. You know, kiss the walls of the houses. But it's, it's not the walls that... Uh, have enraptured my heart. But love of the one that lives between those walls. That's why people come to Mecca and Medina. It's not the stones. You know, when you go to the tomb of the Prophet, it's, it's not the wajiha. But the wajiha is amazing. I mean, you could just stare at it and stare at it and look at it, even though you're not even supposed to, out of adab. But to look at the picture, you can look at a picture of the wajiha for a long time and, and not grow tired of it. But it, it's just metal. It's a grate that somebody built. But it's, what, it's, it's what's beyond that metal. It's what it represents. And that's what all this is in the end of the day. That's all this. These are walls that are hiding the eternal and living God. That's what the world is. That's why when you, when you begin to understand that, you, that's what you love about the world. Not the dunya, the alam. The alam, Rabbul Alameen, Lord of all the worlds. The alam is, the Arabs call that ismu ala. It's, it's a noun of instrument. And alam is the instrument of ilm. It's the instrument by which you know something. And, the, and what you know it, from the world is the alim. It's, 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 it's God's vehicle for giving us knowledge. And that's why things are so important. That, that's why things... Things, ashia, you know, things are important. Possessions are important. That's why property is, is one of the essential 
Im, Im reasons why we were given Sharia is to protect property because things are important, because things have meaning. The Prophet named all of his things. He didn't have many things, but the things that he had, he named them. He gave them names because they had meaning. And that's what the world is. It's meaning. It's meaning everywhere. The whole thing is meaning. It's ma'na. Like the poet said, this whole cosmos is meanings set up in images. And whoever understands that is from the people of discernment, the people of ibr, the people of fa'tabiru ya ulil abasar. Think deeply, give this ibra, give this, and then the ibra leads to abra. That's where the tears come. You know, they come from perception of meaning. You know, to really know what something means. It's just, it's an amazing thing to know what something means. You know, it's, it's a great gift that God gave to human beings.